afternoon. Um, it's always great to be able to talk, to talk about turtles and to talk to an audience that I know appreciates turtles. So um, we have about 30 turtles um, in Florida, and about half of them regularly use uh, Florida springs or spring-fed rivers. So um, we'll just go through those quickly, starting on the top left are some cooters. So the one with the yellow belly is uh, the Florida cooter. The next one going down is the Florida red belly. The next one going down, we call it the Swanee cooter locally, it's a river cooter. And below that is uh, the yellow belly slider. And then in the middle are snapping turtles, and we now have four, I can explain that later. Uh, top right is the loggerhead musk turtle, below that the common musk turtle, the Florida soft shell, Barber's map turtle, chicken turtle, and the striped mud turtle. So these are all things that we find in Florida Springs. Next slide, please. So they, they're not found equally. The likelihood of seeing these all through the state varies. So if you go to the Panhandle, there are more species than as you come down the peninsula. There are um, the species on the left, the Florida cooter, striped mud, soft shell, stink pot, and um, that's George Heinrich's holding a snapping turtle. Those are found statewide and so you might find them in the spring anywhere in Florida. Red bellies also almost anywhere in Florida, but there's a significant gap near Tallahassee. Um, so if you're out in the panhandle, there's more diversity because of things like map turtles. So you see the map turtle in the middle, but that, that um, naturally only occurs as far as the Apalachicola. And then as, as you come east, the alligator snapping turtle comes as far as um, the Suwannee River naturally. And then as you come down the peninsula, there are other species that drop out. So the, the yellow-bellied slider, for example, is at H. Tuckney, but we don't have it at Rainbow Run where we do our work, um, where <coughs> the, uh, the, river the river cooter or the swanee cooter is the most common species. And it's interesting that then one of the statewide species, the Florida cooter, seems to fill in at, at Rainbow when the yellow belly is absent. And then when you go down to um, the springs just north of Orlando, you still have the loggerhead musk turtle, but um, the swanee cooter is absent, and it's the red belly turtle that seems to fill that space. So next slide, please. So we uh, biologists have been studying turtles in Florida Springs for a long time. In fact, um, all the way back to the time when you had to make a mask yourself out of an inner tube. So, uh, <laughs> but um, this guy, Lewis Marchand, was one of Archie Carr's first students. And um, he studied turtles on the Rainbow River. So that's not a turtle poacher there at the bottom. That's a biologist. <laughs> and look at what's in that, in that boat. It's full of big female <clears throat> cooters. And this is not what I find with my students now when I go uh, with them. So <clears throat> a bunch of these cooters are sexually sized dimorphic. The females are much larger than the males. So if you're going to eat cooter, see those bumper stickers, eat more cooter? I haven't seen any of those lately. But it's the females that get eaten. And, and this has been a problem historically in Florida Springs where people can catch turtles. So the next slide compares what Marshan found in 1942 to what I'm finding with my students now working at, at Everett College. So we started in 1990. And um, basically, the two big bars all the way on the left are the two big cooters. And what you can see is that they disappeared and we're pretty sure that they were eaten. The big yellow, the big yellow blotch is Florida soft shell, which also, those were likely eaten. And the other really interesting thing is that um, the loggerhead musk turtle was not native to the Rainbow River originally. It was introduced in the 1960s, and it's basically replaced the common musk turtle in the, in the Rainbow. Um, so one of the the, the nice things that I've been able to do with my students is to get a grant to work at Ichtuckney and then compare Rainbow to Ichtuckney. And one of the things that we found um, is that there are differences in population structure that could be instructed in terms of, of um, strategies for managing turtles. So Ichtuckney has about t twice as many reproductive female uh, Somali cooters as what we see in, um, in the Rainbow. And um, the big difference between Ichtuckney and the Rainbow River is motors, boat motors. And so there are a couple things that go on. You can see there's, <clears throat> there's a turtle. That, that turtle is still alive, but it, it's been hit by a boat. Um, and then if people are going to poach turtles, it's a whole lot easier to go by motorboat than to paddle in. And then um, finally, there's the matter of basking, right? And 
if you're going to run a lot of big motorboats, you have to take out the big snags. And if you've been to Itchtuck, you know it has tons of really nice big snags that are not there in the rainbow. So the next slide, please. Yeah, because when we think about the habitat for turtles, you got a bass, right? Especially the, the herbivorous ones, the cooters, they, they, they feed on, on vegetation and then they have to come out to bass to help uh, digestion. So <clears throat> you've got to have cover. So the big beds of emergent vegetation that we find in the Rainbow River, that's where the students do most of the, the turtle catching, is right in those. Um, you've got to eat, right? So uh, water clarity is a big deal. Salt oxygen is a big deal. Um, and we just realized recently that, that the dissolved oxygen might not be just a matter of, of indirect support of the food chain, but some of the turtles are breathing through their skin. And the ability for these little musk turtles to live deep in the river, they live where it's flowing hard and where, there's <clears throat> where it's flowing really fast, and they don't have to come to the surface because there's enough, enough dissolved oxygen down there and the water's flowing fast enough. So what, worries me about this is if the flow rates go down, dissolved oxygen goes down, those turtles have to come to the surface more often and their survivorship is going to go down. So next slide, why does all this matter? Well, it turns out that Florida is one of two centers um, in the world for turtle biodiversity. The other one is at the mouth of the Ganges. And it seems to be that part of it is due to phylogenetic history. That is, we only have snapping turtles in North America and we have four, okay? It's partly biogeographic history. We have this peninsula where species have been squeezed off and speciation has, been, has taken place. And so we have things like the Florida red belly and that striped mud turtle. But it's really clear that one of the reasons why we are a global center for biodiversity is that we have great habitat diversity. And it's really clear that, um, that springs are a big part of that. And I know that everybody loves springs, everybody loves turtles, so we work together. Thanks very much.